So I got this flat file, ProRes 444 export for EDO con pre-conform. And everything, most of it was shot in Alexa. There's some stock. Um, but as I was color correcting it, um, I, you know, and I did this never occurred to me until I was too deep into color correcting to figure it out. Um, I noticed that a bunch of the clips, I just couldn't, had a hard time matching to the Alexa footage. And then I realized that some of the clips in the timeline did not come from an Alexa. Uh, and it's hard to tell that because obviously when you're working in a flat file, EDL pre-conform workflow, all you see is the file name for each clip, right? Is, is just a ProRes file. Um, so what happened was like, if I, let's go into Lightbox view here. And I took, I removed all the color correction settings. And when I go into Lightbox view, this gives you a bird's eye view of the entire timeline shot by shot. And then I noticed these shots sticking out here. And um, obviously these are stock, but this is a good way to instantly see like what shots are in log um, color space and which ones are not. So these look like they have a, some sort of baked in 709 LUT. So yeah, I had a hard time color correcting these shots to match it to look nice relative to the Alexa shots. So when I did some further digging, when you go into edit page, and this is actually one of my favorite, it's one of the unheralded non-sexy features of Resolve, but it's one of my favorites is this edit index panel in the edit page. So even though this is an EDL pre-conform and it chopped up this ProRes flat file with the EDL, cool thing about this workflow is that actually preserves the original clips that were in the EDL. Because if you look at the EDL file, let's find that. So this is the EDL file I got from Nick. Okay, so that's the accompanying EDL he sent over with the ProRes flat file. But the EDL preserves real names. It preserves uh, clip names, all that. And it actually preserves the original source time code of the clip uh, that was used to export that file. So even though the ProRes master has no, obviously has no time code references of the source clips, nor the file names, the EDL does. The, the only thing that the pre EDL pre-conform feature in Resolve does is that it just looks at this column here and it just uses it to chop up the, the edits at the edit points. But it's cool thing about it is that it actually imports all that other metadata in the EDL, which includes the original file names of the clips, see, so even though it's this, that's the ProRes file, the actual source clip that ed Nick used to edit is that. So that's a really cool feature. But that's how I determined that these clips were not from the same batch of media. So obviously C1, this naming convention is the red camera file name convention versus this is the Ari Alexa file naming convention. So that's how I could instantly tell that, oh, this came from a red camera. Okay, let's go over to Premiere and see what's happening here. So luckily enough, I had my own copy of the source media, the R3Ds here. Um, even though Nick sent me a Flatten Pro as file for EDL preconform. Uh, so luck, uh, I'm fortunate enough that I could do this without having to go back to him. Uh, if I didn't have time, though, I'd obviously want him to do it this way. But um, so let's look at what I, I just loaded in two of those R3D files into Premiere. So what happens in Premiere is that uh, R3D files will come in depending on the version of the camera. Uh, newer cameras will import um, with kind of like a default. I hesitate to call it a LUT because it's not a LUT. It's a transform, a mathematical transform. Uh, there, and there's a difference between that and a LUT. But that's really not super important for this discussion here. Um, but you can see that it, it doesn't look flat is the important thing. So when you're editing with the R3D files, you don't have to like go in and apply a Lumetri filter and force a LUT on it. Um, the R3Ds come into Premiere with kind of a human viewable look applied to it, which is great for editing. Uh, so you don't have to think about that. But when it comes time to exporting a pre file, we don't want that baked in because it becomes a real pain in the butt to try to intercut and match the color to another camera like the, the Arri Alexa, with the, which has a different log um, color profile. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's a huge pain in the butt. So what you need to do, uh, if you're going to export a pre master or if you're going to fix uh, these problems because you do luckily have 
the O3D files locally, the the way that you work around this is to uh, you need to in the bin find all those R3D files. And I can explain what's going on here actually before I do that. So if I click on the R3D file, you can see in the effect controls, obviously the default is all the motion, position, all the standard effect controls. But there's also this thing called uh, source, I think it's called master clip effects. Let's right click on here. If you right click on a bin, a clip and bin, you can see this disable master clip effects. So what it's referring to is that you can apply a color filter or an effect to the clip itself. So in the bin, and you, everywhere you drag that clip in other in whole new timelines, you don't have to keep reapplying that clip uh, effect. So that's handy if you want to just have a temp grade on something. Uh, and where you see that filter is in here. It, it almost doesn't look like a tab, but it is. If you click on this thing that says master, see now it flips to that. And for red files, it applies this effectively a filter called red source settings. Um, for near red cameras, there's, it uses this image pipeline called IPP2, which is Image Processing Pipeline 2, which is Red's proprietary color management system, which is similar to ACES or things like that you may hear me talking about. It's not super important you understand what that is, just it should set be set to IPP2. Sometimes it'll be legacy, but check on that first. Uh, and then when you go down to here, in the primary color space should be set to red wide gamut RGB, Gamma curve log 3G10. So this is kind of like the equivalent of Aries log C flat log look. And you want that, generally, you always want that to be set to this. And any of this stuff, ISO exposure, Kelvin tint, you only want to touch that if there is something obviously wrong with the footage at the acquisition level. So if this thing was super underexposed or something and you needed to send out a new flat file ProRes, you kind of want to, if effectively you're kind of doing a pre-grade you want to kind of bring out as much detail as possible without clipping anything obviously at this stage because by the time it gets to the ProRes I will have no access to any of that so if you can optimize the clip uh, for color correction that'd be great uh, but that's that's not too common uh, it does happen but just to let you know for the most part don't touch these unless you need to you keep scrolling down here this is the important settings here. So this is kind of the equivalent, functional equivalent of when you apply a Lumetri Rec 709 LUT to ARRI footage, Alexa footage. This is the effective equivalent to that. It's not the same, it's not a LUT, and I'm, because I'm super pedantic about this stuff, because it is important, it's not a LUT, but it kind of accomplishes the same thing as a LUT, but it's called an output transform. It's, it's a mathematical uh, equation that transforms one color space like flat log C to another like rec 709, but it doesn't destroy or clip data in the process. So this is why um, there's a distinction made between LUTs and transforms. So I know you didn't really care about that, but you should care about it. And that's important to understand. Um, but what's important to do here is to reset all this stuff, tone mapping, roll off, color space, and gamma curve. So it defaults to this because this in most cases gives you a pleasing look to the flat raw footage. So when you're editing, you do want this stuff enabled, uh, but you want to turn all this stuff off when you're exporting a flat file pre-conform master. So what you can do is, uh, and I have documents in the past where I've said, okay, go in here and set this to none, set all this stuff and then set this to red, red, red wide gamut RGB and uh, log three G 10. Uh, but, Duh, it never occurred to me that um, this setting is actually a, a fa an effect in Premiere. So what you can do, instead of going through all the trouble, but it's good to understand that this is what this doing this is doing. Because let me just do that. If I just turn this none, none, and then match the output color space and gamma to the input color space and gamma, that's what you get, which is a good starting point for color correcting a log image. Um, let me reset that. Okay. So instead of going in and every clip and doing that and turning that off, what you can do is find all the R3D clips in the bin here. And obviously it just helps if you if you have, just, just do this in a new project where you drag the timeline into the project and uh, that way you can create a smart bin and 
and just find all clips that have, um, in the case of red, you'll just type red. Okay. So if you select all the Earth 3D files, you can just right click on it and go disable master clip effects. In fact, so let me scroll up here. So if I do that, so you can see that it disabled that and now it effectively did the same thing as what we just did there. So that's something you want to do before you export a, a pre-conformed master that has camera raw settings, specifically Earth 3D files. Uh, this may be different if you have a black magic raw clip. I don't know. I have, so I haven't we haven't really worked with that footage, uh, but the principle is the same. Uh, you want to override any kind of LUT or transform that makes the raw footage look nice in the edit, edit timeline. You need to override that and make sure it's outputting a proper log based image. Uh, that way it, it's easier to intercut and match it to cameras that have different color science on it. So at that point, you can re-export the timeline and everything will be easier to color correct. So um, this, uh, I really like this in Resolve. One way to easily quickly spot those in pre-conforms is using this light box because if everything else is exported log C, flat, flat, you can instantly see like, oh yeah, there's something about these clips, they just don't match. And so you gotta kind of go and pinpoint, uh, drill into those and figure out what's going on. Uh, but that really helps with the pre conform process. So if you have the uh, Earth 3D files, obviously you can do this yourself. Um, but if not, then you have to tell the editor to go back and basically do what we just did there in Premiere and export a new file. So that's how you deal with that Earth 3D files in a flat file workflow.